All right, guys, we are here at Trestle Bike Park in Winter Park, Colorado, and I was lucky enough to run into Jeff Sonkrent, the president and bike designer of Eminent Cycles. As you guys know, I recently rode an Eminent on set when I was out at Trek, and I was up in the air whether I wanted to race or not, but when I got on the Eminent on set, it was 100%, I want to race now. It pedaled super efficiently, which really drew me in because I've never been on a bike that pedaled so efficiently like that one. So I ended up finishing the race better than I thought I did. And I liked the bike so much, I reached out to Eminent Cycles and we developed a partnership and I'm super excited about it. And now we have the man himself to tell you guys why I love the bike so much because I can't answer those questions. All right, so first, before we jump into this, what makes Eminent Cycles different from all the other brands? Because no other brand has stood out to me as much as Eminent Cycles. All right, so what makes Eminent different is we wanted a bike that rides great, which is what everybody wants, but we wanted it to look amazing and also be really stiff. So we spent a lot of time making a bike that rides great and it also looks great. So if you're looking for a bike that rides great, looks great, check us out. As everybody knows, I like to ride hardtails which is another reason why I like this bike because of the stiffness. But I wanna know why you wanted to go with stiffness in the bike when it's a full suspension because more people want that plush feeling. What's your reasoning behind the stiffness? So the first thing is, is for me at least, was I wanted a stiff frame so that I could tune the suspension to my riding style. A lot of times when you get a flexi frame, you tune your suspension, but it's hard to get the bike to behave like you want it to because you're also getting a lot of flex in it. And that changes by how fast you're going and the type of trail riding that you're doing. If you start off with a stiff bike, then you can tune your suspension to be consistent for any type of trail you ride. All right, I just wanted to get that question out of the way because I love my hardtails and I like that stiff feel. But we need to talk about this climbing ability because that's what really drew me to the bikes. The fact that it can climb and go downhill. Tell me a little bit about the suspension and how you've been able to get a bike like this to climb as well as it does. Okay, so we make our bikes do three things really, really well. We make them climb good, we make them brake good, and we make them descend good. And so, what's the special formula for climbing? Anti-squat, but in layman's terms, it's basically how much we raise that pivot of the main chain stay to the sprocket by putting a pulling force on the chain, the suspension's either gonna come up or it's gonna go down. And so what makes it climb so good is that when you step on the chain, that the suspension wants to push down. And so that basically stops the bike from squishing every time you pedal. And so you want a flat, non-squishy bike to climb with. And that basically says, hey, I'm gonna step on the pedal, step on the gas, and the bike wants to go forward, not squish down. Nice. And that's what we did to try and eliminate, to make it climb so well. And that's what I felt. I felt when I took a pedal, it just went. I didn't feel any drag or any loss of momentum. As soon as I pedal stroked it, it was it was off. And I right really like that. Jump into the next thing is that braking systems. Out here at Trestle Bike Park, we have a lot of brake bumps. And when I'm in the corners on those brake bumps, my tire sticks to the ground. And I had that issue out with the race too. When I was racing, I would go over roots and my back wheel would stay on the ground. Tell us about how that brake works and how it's separate from the frame. Braking forces are called anti-rise. That, or that's the term used to understand what's going on. But to put it in layman terms, basically we're trying to separate the forces of the brake from the movement of the chainstay. And so what that does is basically when you're grabbing the brakes, inertia wants to compress the suspension. But if you're able to separate the brakes from the chainstay movement, the braking action doesn't compress the suspension and allows the suspension to still stay active when you're grabbing the brakes. The way that we've done that is to make the brake move separately from the chainstay. If you look at it closely, you can see that the chainstay actually gets closer to the brake bracket to show that there's a difference of motion between the two. And that's what makes the braking action so good on this bike. All right, so we talked about the brakes. We talked about how good it pedals. You said you like it stiff, you like it fast, but you also say you like the bikes to look good and this thing does look good and that's another thing that I really like about it. And I got so many compliments so far on the bike and how good it looks and how different it looks. So what was your idea behind designing this? When we started out, bikes didn't look like they do today. It was back in 2011, 12. And we wanted this modern, fast, aesthetic look. Everything was just kind of round tube. The front triangle didn't know the rear triangle. And so we wanted the front end of the bike and the rear end of the bike to know itself and look as one unit 
but we wanted to like make it look fast just standing still. Bringing that straight line all the way down to the back makes the two know each other and look a little faster because it's an angled line. We added harder, more rectangular shapes to the bike so that you could see the consistent edges. And then we added design features in the head tube, in the seat tube, and in the dropout rear ends to give some design cues to the bike to kind of make it stand out again. So that fast top tube line, hard edges, and then some design features. And I don't really think there's more other bikes that look like this out in the marketplace. So that's what we were trying to do was differentiate from a look standpoint, modern and fast. What was the thought process behind that part again? Cause I think you explained it earlier, but for people wondering what that's there for. So what we wanted to do was connect the seat stay to the chain stay with the shock so that the shock was seeing all the forces from the suspension only. So that it was as supple and supportive as it could be because the shock was basically acting uh, between the two moving parts. We knew that it had to go through the seat tube. And so we could have done it like down there, but our designer thought, hey, this looks a lot cooler if I throw this 45 degree angle onto it and uh, it wound up sticking. It looks really cool and like futuristic. I've never seen anything like that. I've never owned a carbon bike before. And when I was racing the imminent onset, people would ask me how much did the bike weigh compared to my Roscoe. And I keep forgetting that this bike is carbon because I'm used to riding aluminum. Uh -huh. And my question is what made you go with strictly carbon and no aluminum models? Well, so what we wanted to do was to see how far we could make the technology on the looks and performance side. So on the looks side with carbon, you can mold. And when you can mold something, you can make it in all kinds of crazy shapes. You can get this into it, you can get this head tube, you get rectangular shapes out of it. So that's something you can do with carbon. With aluminum, you, you wouldn't get as a rectangular tube. You'd see weld marks all over the place, maybe different pieces making it up. And it just doesn't look as high end from that perspective. Plus with carbon, you can spot lay up more carbon fiber in a place that needs more structure and make it thick, thin, thick, thin, however you want. You get a little more of a premium performance bike by using the carbon because you can locally reinforce things. All right, so if you guys have been around my channel a while, you know that I promote mostly budget-friendly bikes and I feel like around that $3,000 range is honestly all you, the average person needs to spend for a nice quality mountain bike. And what really drew me to this bike is, I mean, it's so premium and it's got everything you might need on a mountain bike and it's got high spec carbon frame. They told me out there at Will and Sprocket in Wisconsin that these were on sale half off. So that's what really drew me to it. I think if you guys wanna get a premium bike, this is the one to check out, especially with the deals going on. So tell us about the deals going on with this bike and what are you getting for $3,000? So right now we're running a sale at 50% off because we just really wanna get these bikes out in the marketplace. We feel we make a great bike, Looks good, rides great, but it's just not getting out there enough. And the pandemic just saw a massive increase in prices over bikes from freight to raw materials to uh, manufactured product. And so it's like, hey, these gotta get out there. We gotta get the prices down for the consumer. Basically, we're trying to clear out our existing inventory, 50% off now for the rest of the month. And what you get for it is you get the complete bike. The comp on set comes with Crank Brothers wheels, Fox suspension, Shimano Dior SLX drivetrain, TRP brakes and a KS dropper. So you get a complete high performance bike for an entry price of $3,000. So as you guys know, I've been talking about specialized status, what you can get for your money, the Trek bikes you can get for your money. But for $3,000, I feel like you get twice as more with this bike. You guys will really enjoy this bike. It's 150 on the front. 140 on the rear, plenty of travel for a lot of trails. Quiver killer is what they call it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this is the perfect bike for any kind of trail. And in my opinion, right now, I don't think you can get any better deal than this bike right here. So if you want to come check out the deals, we have onset STs, 120, 130. Onset LTs, which Maddie rides, 140, 150. We have frame onlys too, for those of you who like to build up your own custom model, just go into the bike section and look for frames. And we have onsets and we have haste and we also have e-bike drives that are also frame only. If you guys have never ridden carbon and you want to get into the, the carbon game, this is the easiest way to do it right now. And I feel like this is the best way to do it. I really love the bikes and I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to ride one and let me interview you right now. This is awesome. So awesome. Well, I thanks really for checking us out. It, yeah. Appreciate it, Maddie. Check us out at eminentcycles.com and get one today.